Entrepreneurial Edge is brought to you by Business Banking from FNB. Because small ideas can lead to big business. FNB, how can we help you? Uh, Trinity Nala, the founder of TNT Appointments, is our entrepreneur this week. Uh, you're in the human resources business, award-winning, if I may say again. Mm -hmm. Now, the uh, point we're touching at the end of the first half here is that a lot of entrepreneurs, when they do get their first bank loan or when they start out with a bit of capital, do go out and, and get large, flashy offices, even before they've started pulling in the money in the business. Yes. What, do you th what do you think about that? I, I really don't understand. I, I know to a certain level you, you want to put an office that if a client says, no, don't come to my office, I'll come to you, it will make an impression that I really want to work with the Trinity. But I just don't understand why don't we just have a nice office to work in, like other than having a flashy office. I always believe let's end things. You know, if it's going to be flashy, let me make some few millions and millions that really justifies that I mean, the money is there. Why can't I have a fleshy office? I really don't believe that's necessary. Let's get uh, down to your business, recruitment and human resources. Now, from what you said in the first half, if I was listening, I'd say, well, it doesn't sound that difficult. You know, get a phone, get a small office, mm. and away you go. But how difficult is it to, to get ahead in this business? Because I can imagine a family person or a single mother who has two kids who wants to start this. Obviously, this it will be difficult because it's a journey. I mean, there, we stayed, I'm, I'm sure, about eight months to, to 12 months when we, and we were not earning any salary. So, and, and it's not like we saved money. It's not like we had parents that we could go to and, and say, you know, I need this and that. But I really believe one, if you do something that you're passionate about, I mean, it, it, it does not even feel like a job anymore. I just love seeing someone to say, hey, I got you a job, you can start on Monday, and it's fulfilling. But at the end of the day, I understand that, that I need to bring money, I need to eat, I need to pay bills. But I, I truly, truly believe if you do something that you enjoy, you excel. It doesn't matter whether along the way, you know, the road is curvy, it's bumpy. It's, it's a journey, just like anything. It's business, it has it's, it's different seasons, just like anything in life, just like relationship, just like anything. So when the, uh, the road is bumpy and heavy, mm. what was your lowest point, you think, when you were setting up this business? Um, I remember the, the same year that we, we set the business, it was the same year that I was going to get married in, in December. Now, obviously, I have to put my part and say this is, the money that I have but I remember as well lucky enough just before the marriage I think two months before you know like that end of the year um, there's one of my teachers he's late now but like one of my teachers who was who had a very good position in one of the companies and he gave us business I remember that year I mean it was the first year just seeing about 70 something thousand in the bank account, it was like, wow, wow. So that helped a bit, yeah, so that, that kind of helped. But I think that was the first billing that, that we made, just after eight months. But there must have been a time when you went to go see somebody and you walked out demoralized, and thinking, well, what am I doing with my life? Perhaps I should have been a clinical psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it, 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 it happens, and, and a little bit I put my arrogance as well because I'm just thinking you're a client and I'm a service provider there should be some mutual respect um, I'm here to say this is what I can offer you it's either you want what I can offer you or you don't want it there's no reason for us to be hostile um, and, and I, I know there's one client that I particularly said no I'm also here to see if I like to work with you I've done my research but I, I'm also here to assess if I want to work with you, you know. I just put in a little bit of arrogance to say, it was a nice way of saying let's respect each other. But you strike me as a, yeah. as a person who, who likes people, um, but how, uh, do you take things hard? Do you get wounded? Do you get hurt when, when business is going badly for you? Um, I think when, when it happens, I, I, I I get, you know, I develop a certain character of, of being strong and handling that. Because there are a lot of things that I look back and I still don't understand how I pulled through, how I survived, like how, how did I manage under 
so difficult situations, how did I manage to, to just rise above and be where I am? So y yes, it's difficult, but I think when I'm in that moment, there's, there's a certain character that develops, that, that faces that challenge. Now, over the last few years, the world economy, uh, not just Africa, has had a terrible recession that's hit everybody. How has that hit the, the recruitment business, your business? It has, um, and hence we diversified as a, as, as a business. A lot of people are not hiring anymore. If, if you know, they retrench or if someone resigns, they still don't even, you know, they don't replace the position. So we have a labor broking which kind of help because then when people go through the recession and they don't want to take pe people permanent, then they take people on a contract basis or project basis. So that, that's where we tap in, that's where we focus. And as well, we are now an accredited uh, training company, so we focus on, on training as well. Um, the recruitment, I have to admit, it, it did suffer a lot, but like I'm saying, we become, I'm an entrepreneur, I become creative, I look at at other areas where I can offer service just within the human resources and I do that. And what kind of things did you have to do in this recession to survive? We were like it was at the same time when uh, our accreditation came through so that really helped us and as well the you know like I'm saying the project I'm, I'm not sure if it's luck or we're at the right place at the right time which will I'm sure it will be luck um, but you know, like I'm saying, that we then we focused on the project management in terms of companies that don't want people permanently. They have this to be done. They just need people who can do it and live. So we will take over those people. We employ them and we do the project for the business for for organisations. And one thing I must say, I mean, I've had um, uh, interaction with uh, recruitment companies like yours yes. uh, as as a boss, and uh, mm. sometimes. One thing I never quite understood about your business, some people would phone me and say, look, mm. we've got a great journalist or who can come and work for you, that this, that and the other. Yes. And I, I say, oh, well, not really. We, we don't mm. really need your services. And I put the phone down and then you always think of five minutes later, think, well, I could actually probably find this person myself without okay. too much trouble. Is that not a problem for you, you guys? Yeah, but I'm, I'm always saying, um, why do you want to do, why don't you focus and do what you know best and let the recruiters, the specialists do that for you. Like, why would you wanna do everything? You know, I, I do get people like that, but I, I educate them. They're stubborn ones that I'll never get anything from them and they just think, I mean, why do you wanna advertise, get a lot of CVs when your core business is not to recruit? Why don't you let, because time is money. You're not gonna be receiving 100 CVs of people who believe they're journalists and, and they did not even do journalism at all, um, and you spend time going through those CVs, let the specialists do it and you pay them because your time is money as well. You'll be your, your cartridge, your printer, it's just time. You know? And um, another question I've got to mm. ask, because I, I have spoken to a lot of people in the recruitment industry before, particularly mm. in the mining industry. One thing they said to me mm. was at the moment, as you know, there's a premium in this country on uh, young black professionals yes. um, for the, some of the technical and top jobs in mining. Mm -hmm. And they were saying one of the problems is because there's a shortage still of skilled people that someone would get a job, they get them a job and then within two weeks someone else would come with mm -hmm. another job and then another job. Mm -hmm. And sometimes professionals end up sort of ping-ponging around the system without actually um, getting the progress they would because of the shortage in the market. I mean, are you seeing this in your business? No, it, it does happen. I mean, generally when, when I recruit, if I'm looking for an HR manager, an HR manager won't necessarily fit in any company. If you say to me, I'm looking for an HR manager, I need to understand your company culture. I need to understand everything about your company. So it's not every second HR manager who, who will fit into your business. So you assess all those things. But when it comes to engineer, because they are so scarce, you don't even care about the culture now. You just got this person that is so difficult to, to find, and I just want to bring this person and not lose them. But that's because of scarcity. That's because, but at the same time, because this is something that we, we are busy working on uh, at TNT appointments, to say I have a lot of graduates, a lot of engineer graduates, 
you know, we, we need to work on something. They, they need to be, you know, we need to educate companies to say, are you you're going to keep on being in this circle if you don't do something with the skill that's there and it does not have experience? So we need to do something with uh, engineer graduates so that we can skill everybody and, and we address the shortage of, of engineers. How difficult is it uh, recruiting the right people? And I'm asking this question yeah. from experience again. I'm, I've seen some young journalists when I, I saw yes. they were young, I thought, this person is headed for the top. Maybe they didn't do very much. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've seen other young journalists who I weren't quite sure about, and yet they've proved to be achievers. How do you yeah. pick them? It's always very difficult, I find. For us, we depending on the client, we, we, knew, we normally do the normal recruitment process of either advertising or networking or headhunting the person. We interview them, obviously we follow our interview process and we like taking into consideration the culture and all that and we present CVs to you and you make your final decision. But we normally advise clients that can we do a psychometric test and mm. see because then you're taking it a step further. It's not just one-on-one -on -one and asking questions where you can even manipulate, you know, and answer because you've read somewhere how to answer in an interview or something like that. So we, we further do a psychometric test to for clients that allow us to do that. And that normally helps. And what about that face-to-face? That -face, that, can you look into someone's face when they're sitting there trying to, you know, get a position, can you think, yeah, this person's got it? or this person hasn't. Can you do that? It help, I, I, I don't want to call it gut feeling, but there are, there are some of, most of my clients actually, that I know them so much. Because normally when we present CV, we'll agree with the client that we'll present you with three CVs. But there are clients that I have a good relationship with, I know them so well that when somebody walks in there, they just have to give me a good reason why they won't get that job. But I'll tell you that definitely this one will get a job. Well, we wish you the best of luck in your yeah. business, uh, Trinity Nala. Thank you very much, the Managing Director of TNT Appointments. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this episode of The Entrepreneurial Edge. Be sure to join us again next week. For now, from me, Chris Bishop, it's goodbye.